Welcome back everyone, Main Poo here, and today I have a video on MSI Afterburner. I've made a video before on overclocking, but today I may have something for those that would like to get a little bit more performance out of their graphics card. It still involves overclocking, but don't worry, MSI Afterburner would do it for you. The number you would get would be the safest overclock that it feels confident based on its test. You may tweak the final settings if you want, but Trusting the software is probably best if you're not the type who doesn't want to mess around with clock speeds. So before I show you how to do it, which is fairly simple, I'll display some results of a few games. First up is the Superposition benchmark that is powered by Unengine 2, as according to the website, can be effectively used to determine the stability of PC hardware meaning CPU, GPU, power supply, and its cooling system under extremely stressful conditions, as well as for overclocking. I did three runs with this test, and for the setting, I chose medium for the preset at 1080p. The first run is at stock settings on the MSI Afterburner. Minimum FPS was 31.69, Average FPS was 39.88 and maximum FPS was 51.88. The second run was at the curve setting that MSI Afterburner suggested. Minimum FPS was 34.14, average FPS was 42.61, and max FPS was 55.50. The third run was a tweak setting that I used with a core clock of 252 and a memory clock of 180. Minimum FPS was 35.14, average FPS was 44.42, and max FPS was 57.73. When finished, our average gain was 4.54 FPS with a top FPS gain of 5.85. Now you may be saying to yourself that FPS is not that much, but it really depends on the game and this is just a little bit of performance you can use if you are trying to squeeze the most out of your GPU. This is especially useful for those with older GPUs such as the 1050 Ti and older, as well as people that don't have the funds on hand to run out and buy a new machine at the time. Our next game is Borderlands 3. I ran the same three settings as before and used the medium preset. Starting with stock, minimum FPS was 36.91, average FPS was 45.90, and max FPS was 56. The second run was using the curve setting, minimum FPS was 40.54, average FPS was 49.30, and max FPS was 61.91. The last Borderlands 3 test was using the tweak setting. Minimum FPS was 43.62, average FPS was 51.35, and max FPS was 63.07. When finished, our average gain was 5.45 FPS with a top FPS gain of 7.07. .07. Compared to the last test, it's pretty close, but we gained 0.91 average FPS and top gain of 1.22 FPS more. Again, it's not much, but a gain is a gain. The next test is Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. I chose the Ultra preset, but was scared it was going to crash because we took up all the video memory. Luckily, everything went fine. For stock settings, we got 33.1 for the minimum FPS, 95.8 was the average, and 150 for the max. Using the curve setting, minimum FPS was 39.3, average FPS was 96.6, and max FPS was 157. Moving to the custom setting, minimum FPS was 38.1. With average FPS being 97.2, strangely, we only got 125.4 for max FPS. Again, we are still increasing as we try different clocks, but I can't find the problem with the last max FPS. 
Moving on to the next test, we have the game Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers. This is a pretty good looking online game that has a separate benchmarking tool. The presets you can choose are Maximum, High Desktop, High Laptop, Standard Desktop, and Standard Laptop. For my test, I chose the Maximum preset, but only because running the High Laptop preset resulted in some great numbers. Unfortunately, the results file didn't give us all the numbers we needed. It only gave us the average FPS and frame time average. The info in the file looked like this. Using stock settings for this, we got an average FPS of 45.49 with a score of 79.23. Using the curve setting, we got an average FPS of 49.61 with a score of 8226. And lastly is the custom setting, which gave us an average FPS of 51 with a score of 8437. Though the FPS might be under 60, this is still good. This is the max setting preset. So if you want to know what the frames are like using the high laptop preset, just have a look at the video that's playing in the background. As far as the score, this will let you know whether or not your machine can run the game. According to this chart, we're in good shape. The benchmark time for running the test is around seven minutes and it runs through some different cutscenes and fighting gameplay. It must complete before it gives you a score. Our next game is Far Cry New Dawn. This game has a nice benchmarking tool built in and gives good results. For my test, I chose the normal preset and adaptive resolution is set to off. Starting with the stock settings, we got a minimum FPS of 26. Average FPS was 48 and max FPS was 58. For the curve setting we got from MSI Afterburner, minimum FPS resulted in 43. Average FPS was 54 and max FPS was 64. And last is the slightly tweak setting. We got minimum FPS of 44, average FPS was 55 and max FPS was 67. Looking at the results, the averages are pretty close. The biggest jump so far has been in this game with the minimum FPS having a change of 18 and max FPS having a change of 9. Our last test is using the game Fortnite. I used the replay function to get the averages which is a pretty cool feature to have in the game. Anyway, like before, our stock settings gave us a minimum FPS of 44.8. Average FPS was 52.1 and max FPS was 60. The curve setting resulted in a minimum FPS of 46.5 and an average FPS of 54.5. Max FPS jumped to 65.7. The tweak setting gave us a minimum FPS of 45.3 and an average FPS of 55. And rounding out, we got a max FPS of 67.3. Now, with all that out of the way, you can decide if it's worth it to you. I would say yes, you have nothing to lose except a little bit of your time. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this, and it's pretty simple. First, open MSI Afterburner. Next, click the button in the top left labeled OC. This opens the overclocking scanner. Next, click the button that says Test. This should take a few minutes. On my machine, it took right at five minutes. Next, click scan. The software will run a series of tests to determine your clock rate and adjust to load. As the test runs, you will see your core clock begin to move. Memory clock will be stationary at this time.
after about 30 minutes or so, you would get your clock speed. On this test, it suggests for me that my clock speed for overclocking would be 235 megahertz. This is the overclock that the software believes will work without issue. Click the gray check mark and apply the setting. Now click the unlock button on your presets if they are locked and click the save button. Your preset numbers will begin to blink. Choose one of them, then click the lock button. And that's it. Wrapping up, if the video helped you, feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Meanpoo, out.